Okay, so what we're going to get into right now is I want to break down how to uh, modify your brushes inside of Photoshop. Um, so let's just go ahead and get into it. All right, so first thing I want to show you is this. We're going to open up these arrows. And when we have these arrows, what I'm going to do is make a custom brush with this. And then we're going to go through each one of the uh, settings to let you really get an understanding of how these things uh, work. So first thing I want you to see is this. When we have um, any object, uh, you can capture the, the icon or, or take a snapshot of that image and you can turn that into a custom brush. You can use this for various things, um, but let's go ahead and let me demonstrate two points that I want to get across. First, let's take these two. I'm going to capture both of them right now and we're going to go up to edit. We're going to go to define brush preset and it's going to come in and I'm just going to call this test so I know that I can throw this away later. Okay, let's go ahead and click OK. Now I'm going to hit deselect. Now what I'm going to do is turn on a, this layer right here for you for a second. Actually not that layer. Let's go to one more layer here. Okay. So when we have this icon uh, captured as a brush, if I click my mouse down or use your Wacom pen, what you'll notice is going to come in and it captures the, uh, the icons at their particular value. Right? So right now I'm using black. So what you'll notice is that it's using the same gray and same black. Well, what happens if we pick uh, a color? Okay. So you'll notice that it retains the same value. So that's the first thing we want to be aware of. So what happens if I place this red over this black? You'll notice that it's opaque. Right? So it covers. But you'll notice over here that the brush is transparent because the value was gray. So what I want to point out is when you capture a brush or an icon or image, uh, it makes a difference on what the value, the brightness is of from going from light to dark. The lighter the image is, the more transparent that brush is going to be. If you capture it at black, 100% black at that time, when you pick colors or even using black, you know that the brush is going to fill in opaquely. Okay, so that's the first thing that we want to be aware of. Okay, so let's go ahead and clear this out. Okay, so let's go right back to these arrows again. So what I'm going to do is going to, I'm just going to capture one arrow. Okay, so I'll just pick the solid black. For no particular reason, I'm just going to pick this one. Okay, so I'm going to take this, I'm going to go back up to edit, and I'm going to go to define presets. Okay, and I'm going to call this RR arrow. Whenever I save my brushes, uh, when I capture them, I always usually put my uh, initials in the beginning so that I know that it's a brush that I created to distinguish it from something I may have gotten from someone else or purchased or anything like that. Okay. So let's go ahead and close this. Let's open up a new window. Okay. So now we have this arrow. Let's go ahead over here and you'll notice that they changed the icon for the uh, brush settings now. So let's go ahead and click on this. It's just a brush. Uh, you'll see the little line, so let's click on that. So first thing we're gonna deal with when we're dealing with the brushes is up top here, you're gonna see there is something called brush tip shape. So whenever you have a brush that's been captured or um, even the basic round brushes, brush tip shape, when you come in here, this allows you to change the tip of your current brush to whatever's inside of this window, okay? So I'm gonna stick with the arrow that I had. Now, if we scroll down here, what you're gonna see is we have a size slider, which I never use because we have hot uh, keyboard shortcuts that will allow you to manipulate this, okay? We have a flip X and Y, which I almost never use in here. I'll show you why later on there's other options. Uh, now, but this does matter, this angle. Okay, um, what this will allow us to do is control the angle of the brush, okay, the direction of it. Now, roundness also matters because what this is going to do, and before I do that, let's jump down to spacing. I'm going to open this up, and since we're here, with the spacing, this allows you to track out the space between your, your uh, brush uh, that's been captured. So now what I want you to see is this. 
if I take this uh, rotation, I can rotate it, but I can also, with using these dots, I can squash the, the brush, the visual of the uh, icon that I captured. Now, if you look underneath the roundness slider, this is moving interactively as I move these dots. So that's what this is basically for. Um, I'll come back into this whole setup later on uh, when I'm dealing with some custom brushes that use the art pen. Uh, it's a specific brush that's uh, made for Wacom. It's not the, the typical um, pen that comes with your Wacom tablets and styluses. So I'll talk about that a little bit later. Now, let's move on to the next thing, okay? Uh, shape dynamics. If you go into shape dynamics, what you have here is on the first top controls, you have something called control here. This allows us to turn on the Wacom pin to set the pressure sensitivity to pin pressure. So what that means is now, when I, if I were to brush this down, if I press lightly, the pin is going to uh, give me a, a nice thin taper. And then when I press heavy, it gets thicker. When you go through each one of these sliders, you have something called fade. What this is, is your brush will naturally fade out and taper. That's all going to be controlled by this slider right here. So if I just highlight that field and use the arrow key, the up arrow key and just hold it down, you'll see that it'll extend out the, the fade. And if I hold the down arrow, it'll reduce the, um, the the length of the fade. Okay, This can be really cool for when you're trying to get a, a dagger shape or a dry brush uh, effect uh, just automatically by stroking it out where you're not really in control. The computer's controlling it. Next, we have pin tilt. Okay, So you can control this, the pressure sensitivity or sorry, not pressure sensitivity, you can control the size by the tilt of the pin. So depending on the angle tilt will give you the variation of thick to thin size. And now lastly, with the stylus wheel, if you have an airbrush uh, Wacom pin, which I do have, uh, there's a little wheel on the top which allows you to cycle that up and down to control the thick to thin of this. Most of you won't have this. I don't know very many people who do have this. I'm probably one of the, the few uh, people who do have it. I do find it useful, but I do come from an airbrush background so I can understand how this would work. Um, but let's just go back up here and I'm gonna turn this off for a second. Actually, you know what, let's turn back to pin pressure. Now, if you look at this slider above it, what is the size jitter? The size jitter essentially allows you to randomize the thick to thin of the brush, okay? It just, it allows you when you're brushing across to get up and down, up and down randomization. This can be very useful when you're doing something like, um, like a scattered brush that you would use for, uh, let's say grass, leaves, or something like that, okay? So let's turn this back down. Um, and also one, other thing with the minimum diameter when you have it set to pin pressure when you play with this slider this controls how thin your brush will go and how thick it will when you're pressing at the lightest pin pressure okay now let's go down to um, oh and also I didn't show you this but the tilt scale this basically allows you to control the amount of thick to thin with the pin tilt let me turn this off for a second now, when we jump down here to angle jitter, let me clear the canvas here. Uh, this is going to basically control the randomization of your brush. Okay, so if you change the slider, what it means is it's taking your brush and it's randomizing the direction in which the brush is going to come out. This is again very important because if you need something to to um, display randomly like a let's say like a sponge texture this is the slider that you're going to want to control it's the angle jitter okay now if you look right underneath i'm going to jump down here to round this jitter what is this what this will do it flattens out the perspective 
of your brush. So it'll thin it out and compress part of it. And if you play around with the angle jitter at the same time, you can see it will give you different variations of size of that same arrow shape that we captured, okay? So you can take that roundness jitter back. You can change the angle jitter back as well. Um, also, if you look all the way at the bottom, you have a flip X and you have a flip Y. And what you'll see what's happening is it randomizes the brushes as well in terms of how they're flipping up and down. And that's not even with the angle jitter on. So again, for randomization, this is gonna be really crucial. You would need this to help you in terms of uh, creating that randomness without you having to do it. So the brush will just carry it out with the stroke. Now, let's take all this back to normal, okay? Now, this next thing I want you to see, okay, is under the control slider, what we wanna do here is we have a fade slider, we have pin pressure, but what I really want you to pay attention to, what you're going to use primarily for the most part um, is going to be direction, sometimes uh, rotation, and maybe initial direction. But most importantly, you're going to use direction. So what you'll see now, when I brush this in, the arrows will follow the direction of my stroke. If this is off, you'll notice that when I go down, the arrow does not follow. Okay, so let's turn it back to direction. Okay, and this will follow the direction. Now, what if I want the arrows to point to a different direction? So this is where you would go up to brush tip shape, and this is where you could change the direction of your brush here. Okay, depending on whether you have it negative or not, will determine the direction that your arrows are going to follow when you're brushing this out. So let's go back into shape dynamics. And so now you'll see my arrow will follow along. Brush tip shape, spacing, depending on how far you pull this apart, will also give you a different look with your brush, okay? So this will allow you to get lots of various uh, types of shapes. Okay, let's go back into shape dynamics. Next, I want you to see rotation. Now, rotation, what is this? You need to have uh, into its art pen, and I just grabbed mine off my Wickham tablet. And this will not work with the standard pen. But what this ha is, is when I rotate the pen in my fingers, okay, it controls the direction of the pen. Now, in Photoshop, the cursor, it will only show you the rotation before you make contact with the pen. But once I make contact with the pin and I start to rotate my pin, you'll notice the cursor still stays in its uh, position, okay? But if I spin it in my hands, and I can literally just spin it right here in this one spot, and it's spinning the pin around as I move. This is gonna be important for when you're uh, using it to make um, flat marker type uh, designs or, or pins. So actually, let me just go up here and show you. Let's go up here, let's just grab a circle. If I flatten this down and I change this to 90 degrees, okay, and I go back into shape dynamics, and I'm, again, I'm using the art pin. Now, when you look at the rotation, when this is on, this is going to allow you to rotate this in your hand like a flat design marker. And I use this a lot. It's probably the secret weapon to a lot of the work that I do. Uh, I love painting with these flat markers and uh, flat chisel shapes. It allows you to get a lot of variation with your design as you're going, okay? Um, in terms of the rest of it, really you're probably not gonna be dealing with that, but with the pressure, well, let me just explain this. When you're looking at all of these things, the direction in which the brush is gonna go, um, it's all basically the same. You have a fade, pin pressure, pin tilt, stylus wheel. All of these are essentially going to be the same that we saw previously. So to save you a little bit of time of going through those, just keep that in mind. Um, roundness jitter, if you turn this on, it's basically the same thing uh, that we talked about before. Let's go back in. So if I play around with the roundness jitter, the roundness of the shape and actually let's go back to the arrow 
because I think that'll make it a little bit more obvious what we're doing. So you can see the randomness of this, the jitter, and also when I do this, depending on the pressure sensitivity, will control how much of this I'm getting. Okay, I honestly never use that at all, um, but I want you to be aware of what's there and how it's used. Okay, let's move on. Let's go to scattering now. Now, if we use scattering, what is this? And I turn straight dynamics off for a moment. If you take the scattering slider and you move this apart, the top slider, what this will do is going to take your brush, and I'm gonna scale this down. Now, I have not talked about this yet, but the hot key for making your brush smaller is gonna be Control Option. You scroll this down, Control Option, you swipe sideways. If you swipe up, when it's a captured brush, like brush, like an arrow, it gives you opacity. I'm gonna leave the opacity at 100 right now. Now, if I brush this in, you'll see it starts to randomly place these brushes with a scatter effect, okay? You can hit it on both axes, okay, X and Y. You can also turn on pin pressure. So you can control this. And let's make this brush a little smaller. Let's reduce this down. And let's bring these a little tighter so you can see. Go back to scatter. So if I brush in, and if I put pressure, the brush scatters, and when I press softly, they're a little tighter together, right? Light pressure, tight, heavy pressure, they scatter apart. Depending on how far you pull on the scattering, uh, it will determine how far they spread apart when you go thick to thin. And what I mean by thick to thin, I'm talking about pressure sensitivity of your pen. Now, if you look at the count, this controls how dense the amount of brushes uh, you will have, okay? So you can see it really will populate a large area. Now I'm just using these arrows right now, but you can see easily if I had to populate trees, I could easily have made a tree brush and use this to populate a mountainside or hills. So by using this, it's gonna allow you to get that uh, control. Then we have count jitter, which is the same thing we saw before. Uh, whenever you see a jitter, it basically means it's a randomization slider. And if you play around with the pin pressure sensitivity, that means pin pressure is gonna allow you to control uh, the, the uh, count jitter. Now, again, it's up to you if you wanna have that on. You already know if you use pen tilt or stylus wheel, fade, any of these things, rotation, that's going to also allow you to control uh, your tilt, okay? Uh, sorry, your count. Now, next thing I want to point out is if I go back up to shape dynamics, you can also use several things in here in conjunction. So let's say, for example, if I take this back to direction, that means the brushes are going to follow the direction of my stroke. Okay. So this is important because it allows us to see that we can start mixing multiple of these sliders together to create a brush that's going to create a very unique, interesting uh, effect. Okay, So we can go up and down, thick to thin, and it will follow direction. Okay, Next, let's go to texture. Now, I'm going to turn on the texture. I'm going to turn scattering back off. Now, what is texture and how do we use this? Okay, so I'll leave the, the um, I guess I can, let's switch it off arrow for a moment. Let's go to something that's going to make it a little bit easier to see. Uh, I'll just grab a round brush. Okay, so we're on texture. Now, the way this works is, at least the way I like to use it, Okay, if I'm making my own custom brush, I come down here and I like to have texture each tip turned on. I scroll down and I like to have my mode set to height. Then I scroll down to the very bottom and have control and I like to turn this to pin pressure. Okay, this will allow you to control uh, how, how the texture will fill in on the page. 
Next, if you look at the depth slider, let's move this over towards the left. If you go all the way towards the left, you'll see it's going to allow us to get more texture in our brush. If we slide this to the right, it fills in, okay? The depth slider. Minimum depth, this basically controls, okay? The minimum in terms of how much the depth is going to fill in, okay? So you can see if I start playing around with this slider, the texture can fill in rather quickly. Uh, what I'm going to do is turn this back down for a second and let you see the difference. Okay, it fills in a little slower. For you, you're not going to be able to, you're going to have to do this with yourself and, and play with the settings so you can feel how the texture releases from the brush versus just watching me do it because you can't really get the tactile sense of uh, what my pressure sensitivity is on this um, on this tool. So again, you can see this, it allows us to fill in, it's great. Now, here's something I want you to be aware of as well. If you go up top, we have a scale slider. This allows us to scale the texture up or down to make it really small, okay? Okay, you can take it towards the middle. You can play around with this. Brightness contrast will also start to play around and control your texture and how it comes off. Okay, so be aware that all of these sliders have an impact on your texture. Now, up here, this is where you will have your textures. Now, in Photoshop, what happens is if you uh, make a pattern, your pattern will be stored into this brush settings window. Okay, and so Photoshop has a lot of different uh, textures that you can use or patterns that you can use for this painting right away. So for example, if I click on this gear right here, down here they have different textures. They have artist surfaces, artist uh, brush, brushes, uh, canvas, color paper, and here's one that most people don't know it's there, erodible textures. This is going to be drawing textures uh, like paper, like cold press, laid paper, pastel paper, sandpaper, things like that. This is really fantastic. A lot of people don't realize it's there. But all you have to do is click on this. I'm going to hit append so that it will add to the list that I have. Scroll down and then you're going to see these textures in here. Depending on the texture you use, will determine how your brush will paint. And this is really crucial because I like to paint with a lot of tooth and texture. Uh, some people don't, but for me, it takes some of the coldness off of um, digital painting. So there, okay. And again, I can play around with the scale. And there you go. Okay. So now I have my brush, okay. Now, pen pressure's on, height. Now in here, there are blend modes you can use to play around with but here's the one thing I want to point out depending on the blend mode you have the depth slider will work in reverse on some of these so you notice now I have to go to depth uh, take the depth to 100 to start to see some of this texture and it also when you paint it in it paints in completely different Okay. So previous versions of Photoshop, a few, many, uh, I don't want to say many years ago, but when they start, first started applying the texture, they did not have the height map in, in here. So a lot of the custom brushes you're going to get off the internet uh, from other artists, a lot of the texture brushes have been set up not using height. They're using some of these different blend modes. So I want you to be aware of that. Sometimes what I'll do is if I get a brush from someone and I really like it, I'll keep it. But what I'll do is make a duplicate of that same brush with height as the um, as the mode and the reason being is because it's easy to control your texture just by the depth slider alone and with that it's really going to make your painting uh, for me uh, painting process just a lot easier to to do and deal with okay okay next let's talk about dual brush so what dual brush will allow you to do is have two brushes working simultaneously at the same time. So you have your brush tip shape, which is basically this round circle brush that we have before. When you have dual brush, what it allows you to do is pick a different tip that's going to sit on the inside of this brush, okay? Now in order to see the dual brush, we're gonna turn on transfer, okay? And what happens is depending on the brush tip that you have inside of here, 
that's what's going to control the texture. So you can see it already is starting to look a little bit different. Now, notice I have a size control. That's the brush that's on the inside. The big circle on the outside is the initial brush size. This size is controlling the brush on the inside. Spacing, if I take the spacing up, you can see it allows you to see the actual brush tip that's inside of there, okay? If you play around with the spacing, you can pull it really close, you can pull it far apart, you can play around with the scattering to get different effects, okay? Um, and you can also play with the count. All of these things will give you this look inside. And it, a lot of times when you look at a lot of the custom brushes that people are making with watercolor, uh, a lot of times they're playing around with this dual brush settings uh, to create that effect. And then usually they'll use some kind of watercolor texture um, and then they'll mix the two. So they'll have texture on at the same time and uh, you know, maybe they'll have some kind of watercolory type texture, and then they'll come in here and play around with a brush that might have, you know, some sort of texture that they like, and they'll play around with this to get some kind of watercolor effect. I don't have a, a watercolor texture up here right now to demonstrate, I don't believe. Uh, maybe, let's see, this might give us a little bit of that effect. Uh, no, not so much. Not so much, but um, anyway, uh, all you would need is a, a watercolor texture to drop in here and then it'll allow you to get that sort of effect. But again, you can use this for anything. It's great for creating uh, textural grainy brushes and that's pretty much what the dual brush settings are. Um, a lot of times people get really confused with it, but it's you know a great uh, control to have. And, um, and let me just uh, throw one other little thing in here uh, in case you miss this. Uh, if you look at the very top under mode, You'll see there's color burn. You'll see there's different blend modes here that you can play around with. And this will also control what your dual brush looks like. So also you, you'll wanna play around with this when you are making your own custom brushes, okay? Now, let's jump on down. Let's move on to color dynamics. So color dynamics, what do we use color dynamics for? It allows us to get multiple colors in uh, one brush stroke. Um, usually you're gonna use this with something that has scattering on, okay? So let me give you a, a good example of when you would use this, okay? So I have another brush in here and let's go ahead and make a brush out of this really quickly. So all this is, I took a lasso and I took a texture brush and filled it in just to make a quick leaf. Okay, so if I define brush preset, okay, I'm just going to call this uh, RR leaf test. Click OK. Okay, so now I have my leaf. Now, what we're going to do is turn that off, go back up here. I'm gonna go brush tip shape, open up the spacing so I can see the brushes, I mean, see the leaves apart. I'm gonna go into, let's say, scattering. Let's turn this on a little bit so we can get some randomization of the brush. Let's make this a little smaller. Shape dynamics, okay? This is where we would use angle jitter to turn the brush around. Okay, so you can see it started to put this random, spray of leaves down okay now what's the next step here you can also if you wanted to control it by direction but honestly just doing the the angle jitter will help if you wanted some of the leaves to become flat like they're in perspective you play with the roundness jitter and you slide that down okay so now you can see it's starting to give me three-dimensional uh, depth just with the shape alone if I needed texture or I could turn that on I'm not gonna turn it on because I don't want it right now but you can have texture you can turn on dual brush but now let's get into what we're supposed to be talking about here color dynamics okay so when we have color dynamics on what this allows us to do is when I spray down and I have apply per tip on hue jitter 
it allows us to get randomization of color inside of this uh, leaf brush, okay? So if I pick something that's more along the lines of this, and I play around with the hue jitter, it's gonna give me more and more variations of hue, okay? If I play with saturation jitter, that gives me randomization of what's saturated and what's not, okay? If you go down to brightness jitter, what this is gonna allow us to do is control your light and dark of the image. So you can create some that have a slightly different um, value to it. So if I turn this down and I create this look, you can see I can have a randomized leaf brush that's very easy to create. So it's not like you have to go online and grab someone else's leaf brushes. You can make these really, really quickly. With the scattering, if I turn it on to pin pressure, I can control by pressure sensitivity how far these leaves spread out, okay? So you have all of these different controls at your disposal. Now, one other thing I want you to see here. Uh, we do have pressure sensitivity right here with the control. You have tilt, fade, all of these things can be controlled. But I also want you to see up here where it says foreground and background jitter. What this slider is controlling is what your background color is on your in Photoshop. So for example, if I pick this orange, okay, and if that's my background color, if I shift this slider, what's happening is you're seeing the background color come into play into this brush. So I'm getting the green plus the background color. So you, you can use this strategically to get a lot of nuanced color. Uh, you can create atmospheric perspective with your leaves by having it with a blue color. So the blue is gonna bleed in and out, okay? So all of these things are pretty much at your disposal, okay? When you start dealing down here with purity, it's basically allowing you to get control how much of that effect is coming in pure color and or is it become achromatic meaning going to gray right and then if you go to the other side you're getting more of the just pure aspect of the color okay so that's what color dynamics is right so again fantastic this is how you make uh, a lot of leaf brushes sometimes you can use them even with pastel brushes if you want your pastel brushes to have a little bit of texture and just to demonstrate that for you, uh, let's turn this off, turn dual brush back on, change this back to maybe something like this, a random texture. And so when you brush down, you can see it creates this texture. And this can be very, very useful as well. Play around with the spacing, make it really continuous. Now, right now, you would like, you're probably looking at say, how would you use this? I would use it for, uh, background paintings on grass uh, for landscapes and things like that primarily. Okay, so uh, let's go ahead and turn on uh, one of these. I'll keep my spacing down. I'm gonna turn dual texture off and color dynamics off. Let's go to transfer. Okay, with transfer, this is one of the most important things with Photoshop. It controls how your brush is going to allow you to paint uh, with the opacity sensitivity, okay? So the way I like to work, but I'll show you guys first. Um, I usually like to have pin pressure on both of these for most of my brushes, not always, but for most of them. What this means is this, is that when you have your pin pressure, okay, this opacity up here is going to be controlled by the opacity, it's controlling the opacity slider on your toolbar, okay? If you want this off, okay, then you're basically controlling opacity only by the opacity slider up top. But if you turn this on to pin pressure, you're able to control just by pin pressure, let me turn this one off for a second, you're able to control the pressure sensitivity to get the opacity of the brush. Let me go to black so you can see this a little bit more. Now, see this minimum slider? If you take that all the way to the left, this gives you the ability to get more of a light gray. If I press harder, it gives me more of a dark black, all right? The minimum slider, if you feel like you're not able to fill in the brush and get it to uh, fill in uh, rather 
quickly from light to dark. It feels like the transition's a little too slow. That's when you'll play with the minimum slider. And if you look at the preview on the box below, it's showing you how, uh, when you move this to the right, how much pressure you're gonna have to apply to fill that in. Now, sometimes with Photoshop, I like to have this minimum turned up a little bit, but what I've noticed with 2018, that the, that the brushes actually respond a lot better than they used to. I can actually build in and get a smooth transition uh, with my brush a lot easier. But if you're using an older version of uh, Photoshop, I probably recommend turning this minimum slider up a little bit, um, but everyone's hand pressure sensitivity is a little bit different. Now, flow, what is this? Okay, let's turn this off for a second. Now with flow, this, when it's set to pin pressure, this allows you to control the flow slider up here. Now, most people don't use flow. I use flow a lot. What this allows you to do is, see that little airbrush? That's called build up. So if I turn this on here, or if I turn it on and off down here in the window slider, you're gonna see the airbrush toggles on and off, okay? There is a keyboard shortcut for that. It's option shift letter P, and I use this a lot because I like that to be turned on because what happens is this. If I make this a little bit bigger, I hold my brush down and just hold it, you'll notice that it continually will keep spraying like a real airbrush. I like this because it allows your brush to fill in uh, in a continuous tone. It doesn't allow you to end up with gaps. Let me turn this off up here for a second so it's just a little smoother. Okay, so now how I like to work though is if I turn the flow really low, even if the opacity's off uh, or 100%, I can control and get a really smooth tone with this brush, okay? Really smooth without getting a lot of these overlaps. This is probably one of my favorite ways to work. Most people use, let me turn this up, they use opacity as their adjustment. And what it will do is it creates these overlap gaps. I don't care for that. And then for me, it just makes painting transitions a lot harder. So for me, I almost never use the opacity from that slider. If I do use it, the lowest I will go is maybe 80% usually it's 90% or 100 for me most of the time okay so and also I don't even play with that because I can turn it on in the transfer and I'm all good okay so now just with this flow turned on and I can now build this up and if I go back to transfer and turn this on at the same time I get a lot of control with my brush Right, so even though I'm using black, I can get this nice light gray, and you'll notice that I'm able to fill in the brush without getting those lines. So for me, this is a really important tip um, because it's one of the things about Photoshop that can drive you nuts when you're trying to paint is getting those smooth transitions and edges, and this is how I do it, and this is how I teach uh, all of my students to do it. So I like to have pin pressure turned on both, the build up turned on and the flow, I'll turn that up and down. And if I want it to build up really slow, I just turn the flow really low. Now here's another little tiny tip before I jump up and move forward. Another reason why I like to have the build up on when I have shift option P to turn it on. If you start to type in the numeric pad, so let's say if I type 09, it automatically changes the um, value percentage, the tolerance of the flow. Now. If I do zero, zero, it goes to 100. So you type in two digits and it'll type, it'll automatically go to those numbers. Now, if you do not have the buildup turned on, so I just turned that off. If I type in numbers now, you'll see it's changing the opacity. So again, I wanna, that's another reason why I like to uh, have it set up the other way is because I turned it on, shift option P, and then I can just type in the percentage that I want when I'm painting, it's really quick. And this is like my preferred way. Now, let's give you one other little tidbit. Control option, I mentioned this earlier. This is how you swipe sideways to make your brush larger, okay? If you're using a round brush from Photoshop, one that is not captured, where we didn't go to edit, 
and we did not use defined brush reset. This is just a round brush. If you swipe up and down, the brush becomes hard and soft. Sideways is for your size. Up and down, hard to soft. This is really important as well because this saves me from having to constantly navigate inside of my uh, brushes to create a, um, an airbrush type brush, soft edge, or a hard brush. So I want you to be aware of that. Now, up top here on this toolbar, see this little icon? Let me turn this transfer off for a moment. If I come up here and click on this little icon, when you turn this on, it toggles on Pre the pin pressure in your transfer. But the only thing you have to be aware of is if you did not have the pin pressure on here to begin with, then it's not going to be on. So if I turn this on, it's on now, but then it goes away. Uncheck this transfer. If pin pressure is on now, if you were to toggle on and off, let's turn this one off so you can see this. If I toggle on and off, now, you can see the pin pressure will automatically be on there, okay? But I also have it here, but you get what I'm, the point. Now, in one other last little tidbit, well, there's, I shouldn't say last tidbit, there's actually two more things I wanna point out here. If you look up here, they have something new called smoothing. With smoothing, when you turn this on, it allows you to track and smooth your brush out, okay? See these spacing dots? So I'm gonna go up here, brush tip shape, dial this over to the left. Now, let's go back in here. If you turn on smoothing, crank it up. What this allows you to do is create a smooth brush stroke, okay? If you look in here where it says stroke catch up, what that basically means is when you let go, the brush, the stroke will catch up to the end. Adjust for zoom, leave all those. Here's the only one I wanna point out. Pulled string mode. What this is, it allows you to draw. It has a string, it lets you stop, pull out, so you can get more acute angles. This is something that will come in handy, okay? So I'm gonna turn that off. So that's the smoothing algorithm. So you have to turn this to zero if you don't want it on at all. And once you start cranking this up a little bit, you'll start to see the smoothing take place, okay? Let's jump over here. This is the last thing I'm gonna cover for you guys. And that is, if you click on this little icon here, whatever your settings are in the shape dynamics, they're going to turn on. And basically the main important thing is going to turn on the pin pressure for your size of your stroke. So it's another way you can turn on your thick to thin in a very fast uh, way uh, instead of having to jump over into the slider. So for example, I might be in the middle of a painting and I'm blocking something in like this, but now I want it to taper. I just click on this button and then I can now start to get tapered lines and then come back up here and turn that off okay so these are the main controls of the um, of Photoshop they have a few tiny ones down here uh, like noise what this is it just adds a little extra noise on your brush um, I don't use the the um, brush pose at all we do have wet edges, but basically what that is, it creates these kind of wet rings around the, uh, or it puts like a dark line around the edge of your circles. Um, but we already have buildup, smoothing is turned on, and protect texture, you can have that on or off if you want to preserve your texture. So that's it. So hopefully this was helpful and you're able to, to um, get the basics of how these controls work. Uh, it's obviously a little bit longer uh, video because there's a lot of little details to cover. I highly recommend going back and looking through the video several times uh, if there's something that you're missing. Um, just to kind of reiterate and, and clarify uh, some of the, the points that I was making and some of the tips. So until next time, um, I'll you know catch you. So that's it. So we just went over the brush controls. So 
I want to just kind of invite you to look at this several times if there's anything that you may have missed. Um, I think what I've covered is going to allow you to, to modify your brushes and go in and retweak some of the brushes you may download from, uh, from the internet from someone or even brushes that you've purchased. So if you found this video helpful in any way, uh, don't hesitate to go down there and hit the subscribe button. Also hit the bell because I'm gonna have a lot of tutorials that are gonna uh, start coming your way. And if you wanna make sure that you uh, pick these up, you know, that's the best way to make sure you're not gonna miss anything. Um, and also just be aware that I'm gonna have a lot of these beginner tutorials to help people who are just starting out. I will quickly jump from the beginning stuff to some high level advanced stuff. So um, you'll definitely want to stay tuned. So until next time, this is Robert Revels, Digital Painting Tips. 